Hello and welcome to another edition of Desk Side Talks with Mark. I'm indeed Mark, and today we're going to be talking about what I've been playing lately in terms of board games. You may have seen the article from the other day about the new games I played at Conclay, which is a small convention in Connecticut that I was invited to, and it was an absolute blast. There were maybe 50, 60 people there at the peak, and just a bunch of games, and we played games all day, every day, and that was it. So... It was one of my first smaller conventions, and I just wanted to say about it, like, if you have a convention or a meetup around you, that's this kind of thing, just a group of people, a place to go, and games to play, and you can get away for the weekend to do it, I highly recommend it. I talked about all the new games I played on there. There were quite a few games, actually, that I played for the second or third time there. I played uh, Seven Wonders Duel, which I enjoyed quite a bit, but I had played before. I love the original Seven Wonders in that one. The The Duel one is a really good re-implementation of the original game, and it substitutes the interesting drafting of the original with an open draft of sorts with the cards arranged in various shapes where as you gather cards, you're opening up new cards that are available to be drafted by your opponent. And that's the key to Seven Wonders Duel is manipulating the available cards that your opponent has access to on their next turn. And you combine that with wonders that you can purchase that will give you multiple turns in a row and... There's some really interesting things you can do there that I think are pretty much just as interesting as the original Seven Wonders. The military and science is a lot different, and they're both independent win conditions other than getting to the end of the game and scoring the most points. And I don't think that's quite as successful as the original, but there aren't a whole bunch of other ways they could have gone with that. So I don't fault them too much. I just don't think it's quite as interesting as the original game. Essentially, it would be extremely difficult to win with science or military. But if you go for it, your opponent does have to stop you. The other game I played for the second time at the convention was Terraforming Mars. And while I really enjoyed it after the first time I played it, the second time I cooled off quite a bit. I really love the theme, I love the idea of the game, but I feel like as an engine builder you're doing so much throughout the game and you're playing so many cards, but when you look back on your experience, you don't feel like you've gained a lot of momentum there. So where in other games, you know, you may double, triple your your income over the course of the game or more, and things feel like they're getting bigger and larger and more more efficient. In Terraforming Mars, it doesn't really feel like that. It feels like you've gotten marginally more efficient and you've played 20 cards to show for it. So it doesn't give me give me that sense of satisfaction that a lot of other engine builders get and it doesn't carry the weight of momentum. And I just don't find the ways to get victory points particularly interesting. You're not striving for anything in particular. You're just trying to do pretty well at a couple of things and in the end the scoring system seems a bit dull i do enjoy the game i do enjoy figuring out the puzzle of each turn and i enjoy the theme of it although not the artwork which is essentially just it looks like a random selection of google image search photographs but i don't think it's nearly as good as people generally are saying it i don't think it's worthy of being in the top 10 on the bgg list A game that might be worth that that I played for the second time is The Gallerist, which I enjoyed quite a bit the first time, but the second play was really fun once I came in knowing the rhythms of the game. And in this one, you're you're a gallery owner trying to acquire and sell art, and everything about the mechanics is fairly easy to learn. It's got a lot going on, so it's a fairly heavy game, but once you get into the game, 
it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. And so the second play was a lot more interesting than the first because I, I knew what was going on and just had to remind myself of the particulars and lots of interesting decisions there. I really enjoy it. And I think I might like it better than Venus, which is the other Lacerda game that I've played, but I got to play it again. I, I enjoy both of them quite a bit. I think they're really, really interesting designs, although they are quite similar in how their mechanisms uh, work out in that you're given kind of limited choices in terms of actions and you're trying to engine build in a sense and buy low sell high and you're trying to get end game bonuses as the game progresses and so getting end game bonuses is a viable thing from the beginning not just something you rush to at the end although there's always a bit of rush there at the end in that sense they're quite similar and i enjoy both of them the Galarus might get the edge just because it's a hair simpler, but they're both really great games. I've been playing more Netrunner recently after taking a break for a few months for a rotation to settle out. Just got the two newest packs in the mail, and I've been testing out decks online, looking around and seeing what the meta looks like right now. And I have to say the meta looks really good. I'm seeing a very diverse set of decks that I'm playing against. Criminal seems a little underpowered, so I'm hoping that they get some help in this rotation, of which there are four packs left, I think. But Anarch and, and Shaper are doing pretty well, and I'm seeing really good decks out of all four Corp factions, which is which is surprising and really nice. HB is still exceptionally strong, although there are counters to that, and that seems to be where most of the tech is... Uh, is trying to counter. NBN still is good, even though they lost uh, Breaking News. They're still, still very strong, and without Wizard, CTM can still do a lot of nasty stuff. I've seen a lot of kill decks out of Wayland in my practice. I don't know if people are just testing around with that or if that's a viable strategy. And then Jinteki keeps getting really good net damage cards to the point where I'm seeing a lot of decks putting in net damage counters uh, just because Jinteki seems so strong. So it looks like a really good meta right now. I've been testing a lot of Shaper because I have I always love Shaper and the new Shaper identity is really cool. It's really thematic to what Shaper is in that they can click as an ability and find any program. They just can't have the program uh, installed at the end of their turn or else it gets trashed. So what you can do then is click and search for a self-modifying code and then trash that to find the program you really want. And while you're paying a bit more for it, you can essentially get with one click any program in your deck for a slightly increased cost. And that's really good because Shaper's downside is typically that they're slow. And this makes Shaper not nearly as slow and makes them be able to get up things like Magnum Opus quicker than they might otherwise. But I'm also testing out other Shaper builds and I think there's a lot of fun there. I'm trying an Anarch build and I love in concept a lot of the Anarch builds I'm seeing, but I don't think I'm an Anarch player. I really enjoy Shaper a lot more. And I they're, Shaper right now is really the best at doing Doing deep digs in any of the central servers so I'm enjoying that as well on the corporation side my Titan deck that I loved at the end of the last season I played in is more or less intact after rotation and the most wanted list so I've been testing that out same with my controlling the message deck my CTM deck and so I've been testing those and be getting really good results on Corp. I'm struggling more as runner. I don't know if that's an overall thing or if it's just me not knowing what Corps are out there. I've been misplaying a lot, just not knowing what cards I should expect. But I'm loving it. And I'm hoping to have a Netrunner teach and play video up within the next few weeks. Because I think if there's a time to get into Netrunner, this is a really good time with the new core set, new rotation, smallest card pull in a while and a really wide open range of good strategies to go for. So be on the lookout for that. I'll be streaming it and posting a video. Speaking of streams, I've got a couple that are coming up next week. I'm playing Twilight Struggle with two different people next week. It just happened to be scheduled that way. On Monday on the 5th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be playing with Daniel Zayas, on Facebook. So if you look up his Facebook page, he'll be streaming it directly there. 
And then on the 7th, on Wednesday at 4 p.m., I will be streaming on my YouTube and Twitch accounts a game of Twilight Struggle with Katie from Katie's Game Corner, who's a big war gamer, and Twilight Struggle, I believe, is also her favorite game. So I think that should be a fun stream. And uh, that's what I got going on next week. Next week is also the one-year anniversary of The Thoughtful Gamer. And it's crazy. It doesn't seem like it's been a year, but looking back, I, there's a lot that's happened over the last year and I'm very, very excited to see what will happen in the next year. The second year of the thoughtful gamer seems like I'm getting a lot more opportunities and meeting a lot of people and getting my name out there. So that's really exciting. That's what I've been playing and doing recently. Be on the lookout on Twitter, on social media for things that I announce. I've got lots of fun stuff coming up, including those streams. Don't, don't miss those. Uh, don't forget to check out the website at thethoughtfulgamer.com. On Friday, I'm releasing a review for a game that I absolutely adore. So highly, highly recommended. Don't miss out on that review. And if you do enjoy this podcast and enjoy what, what we're doing, there are two ways to financially support The Thoughtful Gamer and help us keep this podcast going and keep the website going. You can go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer and join our Patreon there and be able to listen to our podcast live and join a really awesome Discord discussion group for supporters of that Patreon where we have all kinds of really fun discussions there. Or if you don't want to commit to a Patreon, uh, you can go to coffee, that's K-O-F-I, and look up The Thoughtful Gamer and pitch in a couple bucks there and that's greatly appreciated. Thanks for listening today. Next week, we'll be back with a full podcast where we're talking about real-time games. I'll talk to you then. Goodbye.